Gecko Glue, Cockroach Scouts, and Spider Silk Bridges. How can lizards, cockroaches, and spiders help make life better for humans? How do project makers come up with big innovations? For some of their best new ideas, methods, and devices, scientists and researchers turn to the designs found in nature for inspiration. What makes geckos stick? They run across ceilings. They zip up and down walls. What kind of crazy glue keeps geckos from tumbling down? Researchers at the University of California, Berkeley, and Lewis and Clark College in Portland, Oregon, have solved the mystery. Scientists say that what makes geckos stick isn't tacky glue or suction, it's geometry. We've solved the puzzle of how geckos use millions of tiny foot hairs to adhere to even smooth surfaces such as polished glass, says scientist Keller Autumn. Here's a picture of the bottom of a gecko's foot. Gecko feet are covered with millions of tiny hairs called setae, which split into hundreds of even tinier branches. Each gecko foot has as many as one billion of these split ends. Researchers found that the angle the toe hairs make with the surface allows them to stick. As scientists watch films of geckos in action, they notice that geckos curl and uncurl their toes to get them to stick to surfaces. Why the big interest in gecko glue? Researchers believe that a human-made version would be an ideal dry adhesive that could be useful underwater or in space. Researchers have already made artificial hair tips that stick almost as well as the gecko's own. Now we've got to make billions of them to get significant adhesive force, since, says engineer Ron Fearing. One thing is certain. It'll be a super glue. A million tiny CT concentrated in an area the size of a dime would be strong enough to lift a 45 pound child. Cockroach Scouts. Think before you squish. The next roach you step on could save your life. That, at least, is the goal of Jeff Brinker, a scientist at Sandia National Laboratories in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Brinker and his team have thought of a way to use these insects to detect chemical or biological dangers. The idea isn't as strange as it may sound. The government is already exploring how to use everything from bug-sized robots to live wasps for similar tasks. Brinker once worked on a project that tried to train honeybees to sniff out explosives. Roaches were a natural next step. It's a very durable beast, Brinker says, plus they tend to explore nooks and crannies. The key, Brinker says, is to use yeast that has been genetically altered. The yeast cells are glued to the bug's body and will glow when they come in contact with something harmful. Here is a picture of an American cockroach. Living cells have several advantages over sensor machines, says Susan Brozick, a scientist working with Brinker. They're small, cheap, and very sensitive to their surroundings. Agent Roach reporting for duty. The itsy bitsy spider is a big builder. Legend has it that when mighty ruler Genghis Khan conquered Asia, his soldiers were protected from enemy arrows by very special clothing. These leather garments were interwoven with one of the strongest materials then known to humans, spider silk. Eight hundred years later, scientists still can't make thread more durable than the stuff spiders use to make webs. But biologists trying to copy nature's strongest fiber are making great progress. The U.S. Army plans to use one of great of the great Khan's tricks, making bulletproof vests woven with artificial spider silk. What makes spider silk so remarkable is its unique combination of strength and stretch. 
Spider silk is as strong as the fiber now used to make bulletproof vests, but far more elastic. The web of a golden silk spider is strong enough to trap a bird. Researchers have figured out that a web woven of spider silk, the thickness of a pencil, could stop a jet in midair. When you think about the size and speed of a flying bee, the web that catches it has to be able to absorb a lot of energy, says Jean Herbert, an army scientist in Natick, Massachusetts. Herbert is researching ways to use the tough fiber in everyday objects. Among the possibilities, jeans that don't wear out, car and trunk bumpers that resist dents, and bridges whose structures will not easily erode and can withstand earthquakes. Unlike silkworms, spiders cannot be raised on farms. One reason, they tend to eat one another. So scientists are inventing ways of making spider silk without spiders. The ability to spin a web is controlled by certain genes inside the cells of spiders. Researchers at two chemical companies have made copies of these genes and put them into certain easy-to-grow bacteria. The scientists' goal? Bacteria that can churn out spider silk. Transplanting spider genes is a sticky business. The genes don't always act exactly the way they would in a living spider, so the silk is not as strong or elastic as the real stuff. For now, the surest silk production method is the one that Genghis Khan supposedly used. Spiders themselves. I never step on spiders, said chemist John O'Brien. I have too much respect for them. Here is a picture of a spider with its web. It says spider silk is strong enough to trap flies and bigger prey. <laughs>